MSU is just one of the nation's leaders in deer research. One of the studies recently come out of there is a buck movement study, and well over 50 deer in central Mississippi. These were all three-year-old and older bucks. What they found was that these bucks use food plots four times more than they use feeders. These are adult bucks, what hunters are targeting. And they use food plots more during the day compared to feeders. When comparing buck movements of deer in areas with access to corn feeders compared to deer that did not have access to corn feeders, those bucks using feeders moved more often at night, they moved less often, embedded more, and they moved shorter distances. That data strongly suggest that if you're wanting to see the deer you've got, you should be up using food plots instead of feeders. Another research project to come out of MSU in recent months involved an aflatoxin study. What aflatoxins are, are they're toxic compounds produced by certain molds, and when ingested, these can cause liver damage, and at some levels, they can cause death in certain wildlife. So corn producers test their corn before selling it, and in order for it to be sold for human or livestock consumption, it must rate at 20 to 50 parts per billion or lower. However, if this corn is above 50 parts per billion, it can be sold as deer corn or wildlife corn since these are unregulated. Well, what does this mean? Is it safe for wildlife? Well, no. At 100 to 200 parts per billion, it can affect quail, turkey poults, and other small birds with liver damage and, and even death in small birds. It decreases egg production and eggshell quality, and at 800 parts per billion, it even affects deer farms. It can have reduced body weights, liver damage, reduced feed consumption, and in adult does, it can reduce milk production. The good news, MSU tested bags of corn right off the shelf and only range from five to 23. They also tested feeders across the state and found that that range was from nine to 139 parts per billion. This feed out of the, out of the feeders represents legal, normal feeding from an above ground covered feeder or spin cast feeder. However, the bad news is when they put corn on the ground, put a cage over it, and they let it get wet just from ground contact. So this would be the same if it was getting slung out by animals or the spin cast feed. But what happened to it when it got wet? By day five, that aflatoxin level from a safe sack of corn had risen to 400 parts per billion. And by day seven, it had risen to 1,700 parts per billion. Now, remember, at 200 parts per billion, it can affect turkey poults. We're talking about 1,700 parts per billion by day seven, which could affect the deer and the turkeys and all the other wildlife that people put it out there to try to help. We've recommended that feeding is not a safe alternative for many years. This, go, this backs that up. Now, I will point out that for aflatoxins to grow, conditions must be 55 degrees Fahrenheit and above 60% humidity. I think we can all agree that pretty well encompassed most of the days in Mississippi. 